welcome back off the press where we get to take a look at major headlines on uh, the dailies we go with us today uh, a chief lecturer from the Nigerian Institute of Journalism GD Johnson is going to be joining us shortly but first let's begin with the punch major headline Kano confirms 10 dead 400 hospitalized Lagos Cross River Sokoto one resident. We've got three riders to that story. Uh, 50 undergoing treatment for kidney related ailments. Uh, that's coming from Kano. Don't take products not approved by NAFDAC. That's coming from Lagos. And then this one here Killer drink can get to Oshun from Kano. This is coming from Oyetola's aid, and it's very alarming. Also, we have uh, a number of pictures here. Uh, and it says, Lagos begins construction of a 37 kilometer uh, rail mass transit. Okay, uh, you'll want to get the details of that, right? Just go to page six. Also, below that, uh, we have Ganduji, Kano stakeholders, and Dangote Boas Rift. Okay, now, this particular story splash across most of the uh, front pages, uh, wonder-wise. It's like a clash of the titans. Uh, but we also have this one here, Nigerians lament as officials, uh, racketeers, exploit passport applications. Also, we have uh, Buhari returns after a 15-day UK medical surgeon. We have this one here, controversial payment. RCCG petitioner apologizes as Fashola faces Senate. Uh, that might prove to be interesting. We also have this one here, suspected headsman kill another Ibarakpa farmer in Oyo. And then the federal government demands NIN approves SIM activation registration. Above the masthead, experts blaming security, low production, forex as inflation hits 18.17%. Go to tw uh, page 22 for that. And then we have this one here, Nigeria's exact crude oil production volume unknown. That's coming from Naiti. Printed 60 billion naira. CBN faults Obaseki. Uh, our governor maintains stand. There's still this back and forth between Obaseki and the federal government. Last but not least, nine power plants shot. FG apologizes for outages. All right. And now moving on to the nation newspapers. Government to place sugar, wheat on forest restriction. Also, gunmen posing as burial party kill three policemen at a checkpoint. Shiroro, eight gas uh, power plants break down. Experts uh, in, uh, say inflation's rise to 18.17%, a cause for concern. Killing of soldiers, attacks in Oweri, worry governors. Also, EFCC gives Okorocha bail. Gunmen hoist Biafran flag in Anambra town. Others this morning, uh, that's uh, from the president now to the uh, IG. Don't fail Nigerians as President Buhari returns to the country. We can also find here CBN states must uh, start paying $2.1 billion budget support loan. And also, MFLA talks tough, knocks up Baseki. Apex, Apex banks uh, action uh, to help bad economy. And that's from the CBN governor. New SIM registration to resume on Monday. Uh, the ban was lifted, uh, I think, yesterday. And also 10 dead and 500 hospitalized in Kano State. Lagos begins construction of Agbado Marina rail line. Those are the big ones on the Punch newspapers this morning. Okay, so I've got a daily independent major headline. NAS under pressure to pass Electoral Act Amendment Bill. I've got two writers to that story. Uh, PDP, NCF, others urge speedy passage. CSOs to occupy NAS after Ramadan. Uh, above the masthead, Songulu kicks off construction of real mass transit red line. SEC, CBN, working on cryptocurrencies uh, trading regulation. That's coming from Yuguda. Uh, also, we have this one here. Purchasing power dips further as inflation hits 18.17%. Ganduji uh, reconciles Dangote Bois. Uh, insecurity now. Na Nigeria in agony. Pains. It's time for national healing. This is coming from Mohanes here. Uh, we also have this one here. Gunmen killed. Three policemen set petrol van ablaze in Ebony. And then the IMF says that Nigeria, others need 
$245 billion external funding in five years. All right. Julia Johnson, good morning once again. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. Um, there's a couple of interesting ones. I'm not sure where you would want to start from. Uh, is the is what we have in Kano concerning ten people dead and four hundred of their lives? Yes, um, it's it's a major concern. That that's a pandemic. It's something which um, we should read red flag, red flag on. on on that particular issue. Uh, I can't imagine that happening in any other society where ten of their citizens would die and four hundred would be hospitalized, and that's just. An official figure, we don't even have the upgrade figure. And um, how those products manage to get into the country and to get into circulation without the necessary agency doing their due diligence and preventing that to happen is a cause for concern. In other time, those agencies will pay because people will go to court and they will sue the agency so government and they will sue whoever is the provider of that of that services. We shouldn't be losing the life of every Nigerian is, is very, very important. And what demonstrated that is the, is this parable about one lost sheep, where the shepherd left 99 sheep to just go after one. If it had happened in Nigeria, even if 20 got missing, the Nigerian government and the Nigerian society will not bother. We just say 20 out of 100. Let's continue with our lives. I think and we must, the Ministry of Health and must rein in on this particular matter and agency of government like NATAC must do something so that we don't have a spread of this of this particular uh, epidemic spreading to becoming a pandemic in, 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 in Nigeria and the rest of West Africa. And the other interesting story from Kano is the Kano stakeholder um, bringing an end to Dangote and Kwa uh, face up. That's not the bringing an end to the face of the face of is. They are trying to solve the personality problem, but there are deeper issues that are involved. You recall that last week we spoke about it. It was major headline in the newspaper when Mboa wrote to, um, responded to attempt by Tanguti and Flamish to get a Mboa um, license being withdrawn from sugar refinery as a result of Mboa's um, refusal to, to increase the price of sugar because of of Ramadan beyond the face of resolving the personality differences between Dangote and Boa because they are from they are from Kano. There are deeper issues that we must we must look we must look into concerning 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 that we love them to reconcile, but they must not reconcile to the detriment of an average Nigerian. They must not reconcile to a smart Nigeria. We need perfect competition. We don't need a duopoly. A duopoly we always create a we create a problem whereby the, the consumers will be at the masses of the of, of just few few producers. We don't need a duopoly. We don't need an oligopoly. Government um, deregulated the telecom sector to end a monopoly. Now we have perfect competition in the telecom sector that you can afford to choose any network that you like, and that's the way issue of it in every sector subsector of our economy moving. Moving forward, um, it was a good news also that the president returned after 15 days, 15 days, um, 15 days deep back to Nigeria. But um, the other side of the story that I find very, very funny is the is the order. I don't know how many order the president has given to Inspector General, Inspector General of Police that he has appointed since um, inception of his administration in May 29, 2015. That um, he gave him an order to ensure that there's security. If you give an order, you don't provide the enabling environment. You don't provide the necessary resources for 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 whoever you have appointed to work. You are just giving an empty, an empty, an empty, an empty order. I think the president needs to sit down and have a review of the security situation. It is not possible for any Nigerian to travel anywhere without first looking at the risk involved in traveling. You see, I traveled last week and my tire got punctured between the Gossip and the Expressway. I didn't wait because I was the only one in the car. I didn't wait to 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 change the tire. To change the tire, I drove. I drove with the puncture tire back to Lagos until I got to Bega, right from Ajibo. I didn't stop anywhere because I was the only one. I was the only one in the car. Well, well it's better for me to be safe. 
than for me to be concerned about the economic implication of damaging the car, damaging the car or damaging the tire. That's the experience. I remember a student of mine that traveled to the East and then was coming back from, from Ore. The person drove back to Bini with a punch tire in between Ore and Bini because couldn't wait to change the tire. That's the security situation. And I don't know how the governors and the president can justify the security votes they are collecting month in, month out, day in, um, day, day, day out. We saw a situation that elders, suspected elders, kill farmers in, in, in all your state. So these security implications will definitely affect your economy. We are complaining that, oh, Twitter came to establish the headquarters of their, their regional headquarters in Ghana. Why would you establish a business? You are looking for foreign direct investment in your country. Why would an average foreigner be interested in investing in Nigeria? When even Nigeria in diaspora that wants to come back home, don't want to come back home again because of the security issues in Nigeria. Some of them want to invest in the agricultural sector. Some of them want to invest in other sectors that will push the economy. Some of them want to invest in real estate in their, in their, in their, in their home country. But they can't come. They can't come back home because of the security situation. Now, if a Nigerian diaspora can't come home, we expect the foreigner to come and invest. So if we don't resolve this security issue, it has economic implications, it has political implications, it has psychological implications, it has social implications. Every family is affected. If you travel anywhere, people are not at peace until they hear from you. You'll yeah. be monitored from, from Lagos to wherever you are going in any part of the country. Another story is the economic story concerning the economy, which is the brick part between the Central Bank of North and the Edo State, the Edo State Governor, where the Edo State Governor said last month, um, federal government, um, federal government had to print 60 billion naira to cushion the effect of what the state will share will be disbursed because I hate the word share will be disbursed to state and local government from the federation from the federation account. I think it's the central bank governor that has come out to say something against what Obaseki has said. I think the person that should come out to say something. The central bank government just had an agency. is in charge of um, the monetary policy. It is not in charge of the fiscal policy. The fiscal policy and the monetary policy coordination lies with the Federal Ministry of Finance. Now, we have not heard anything from the Federal Ministry, from the Minister of Finance. We have not heard anything from the Minister of Economic Planning, contrary to what Obaseki has said, except what the central bank governor has said. The central bank governor operates by instruction. It is instructed to do whatever it wants to do. It's not as independent as the chairman of the Federal Reserve that you have in the United States of America that once it's appointed, is insulated from political control. Whereas our own central bank governor is within, is not insulated from political um, control. So Nigeria deserves the truth. To know, are we printing money? He, and a correlation to that effect is for you to see the report concerning the inflation. That the inflation has risen to 18.17%. Now that with that fact, and with, with that fact, you could come to the conclusion that indeed there's too much money in, in, the, in the economy. When you have too much money, pursuing few goods, basic economy, econo elementary economics tells you that that's, in, that leads to inflation, that the cause of inflation is that there's too much money within the economy pursuing few goods. You have deflation whereby there is less money pursuing many goods. So the, the, the inflation report validates Obaseki's position while it invalidates that of the CBN's governor position. Sometimes I wonder whether these people think we are fools and whether the things Nigerians don't have ahead. We don't have the intelligence enough to, to, to distinguish between black and white, to distinguish between red and blue, or to distinguish between night and day because the indices are there. And once you look at the indices, it will give you clear indication of what is happening within the economy. And if we continue to print money, like Uganda did, like under a dear me, then we will turn to a banana republic. Then Naira will become a worthless, a, worthless, a worthless currency, and the value of businesses will drop dramatically. So it's very, very important for critical stakeholders. What is the National Assembly saying concerning this? We don't know. Okay. Well, can we, can we really blame uh, printing of um, currency or, um, as uh, the cause of inflation? Yeah, it's, it's a, look, if elementary economics will tell you that 
if you have too much too much money pursuing few goods it will lead to inflation it will lead to inflation it's it's, it's just a basic it's just a basic index there are other factors that has contributed to that the insecurity situation which has spoken which has spoken about the lack of investment in critical sectors that we have we are a consumption nation we consume everything we have even from china all you need to do is for you to go to kiani market or to go to ladipo market or you go to um, the market in in um, along badagri express alaba international market or you see where these goods are coming from or you go to a papa and you see what is coming in and what is going on in terms of shipment then it will tell you that um we, we, we are reliant on foreign consumption. Export at waste, import at waste our export. Definitely, you will affect, you will affect your gross domestic product. You also affect your gross national product. So all those factors will lead to inflation. Okay. It's basic there, economics. There's something I, There's a correction I want to make here. The Minister of Finance, uh, Budget and National Planning, uh, Zainab, uh, Zainab Ahmed, on Wednesday said that the federal government did not print 60 billion naira. She said in her okay. words uh, that what uh, Mr. Obaseki said was sad but untrue. So let me draw your attention to some other stories, right? You, you expressed worries over unknown figures of, uh, uh, you know, those dead in Kano earlier on. But this is another one, unknown figures. Naiti says that Nigeria's exact crude uh, oil production volume is unknown. That's on the punch, the front page of the punch, right? So I'll, I want you to take a look at that and also take a look at this one. Nine look, power I mean, plants shut and FG is apologizing for the outages. If you could just take a look at those stories. I will talk about the power. Let's talk about the unknown. NNPC as an institution is bigger than Nigeria. It has no control. NNPC from time immemorial Nobody knows what comes in or what goes out out of an NPC. Do you know how many legislative panels, how many administrative panels that has been set up to investigate an NPC? I recall while I was a young chap growing up, when the present president was the minister of petroleum in Nigeria in the 70s, where 2.8 billion naira disappeared in an NPC. That's as far back as then. So NSPC is, is, is a bear month. It's a Frankenstein monster that Nigeria has no control over. And some, that was how Nitel was. That was how NEPA was. And that's why when Atiku Abubakar said there is the need for us to privatize NNPC, it was really good. But I think that's the... And later after the election, the vice president, Yemi Oshibaju, came up with the idea that, okay, we are going to privatize NNPC. There is the need for government to divest in NNPC and allow private participation to participate in it, just like we have in the telcos. Nobody, we have told anybody, my dead, my late father, that every Nigerian we have phone, he would tell it's not possible because he never lived to see what the, the divestment and the regulation in the telecom industry. In actual sense, the former Senate president said when he was Minister of Communication under Babangida that telephone is not for the poor. An average person can afford that telephone now. What he said was not possible in the 90s is not possible now. And that's the approach we need to adopt for the telecom sector. Now, coming to the power sector, there are three critical sectors in the power sector. You have the Gencos, you have the you have the you have the TISCOs, the Gencos are the generated companies, the TISCOs are the transmission companies, and the DISCOs are the distribution companies. The only sector that government has deregulated. Totally, is the discos. That's the distribution company. That's just one of the value chains. There are three value chains. Two of the value chains are still being controlled by government. And it was, a, but we put the blames on the disco. Now, you see, it's federal government that is apologizing that there's power outage in nine of the power generating companies because government has not followed through with its deregulation policy in the, in the power sector. And until we resolve the power sector, we can never solve Nigerian problem because power is critical to building your economy. Power is critical to this world. I give you an example. Let there be a power outage in the studio, or let there be a power outage where I am. Can we transmit? Can people view the programs? A lot of people will be will have an opportunity of viewing these programs if we have power, but because we don't have power, so said for you to view this program, you must run your you must run your own generator. So government has turned us to one. 
a government on our own self. You provide your own power, you provide your own water, you provide your own, you provide your own, your own bowl, you do your own street, you know, you, you provide your own health care. What is government really doing for Nigerians? What is government well, really doing? Well, I, so, I, want, I want us to go back to the petroleum, the NNPC um, discussion. You, you, um, I wanted to quickly also point out that there is a Minister of Petroleum. Um, the Minister should, of Petroleum. Yes, it's an aberration. It. It's an aberration for a president to allocate. You see, you are meant to supervise all the buildings in an area. And then you now allocate a particular building to yourself that you'll be supervising it. What time would you have to supervise all those buildings? What time? It's an aberration for the president to have that ministry under, under his watch. If the president could have that ministry under his watch, I've advocated over time. Why did the president not put the, the office of the attorney general to the under, under the vice president? So if the president, some of us have advocated it, if you want legal reforms, because one of the one of the clamor of the promises that AP, APC campaigned on in 2015 is that there will be judicial reform. The judicial sector will be reformed. And then you have a son, a professor of law, as your vice president, and someone that has been an attorney general for 12 years in one of the most vibrant states in Nigeria, you have him in as your vice president. You didn't give him, you didn't allocate any ministry to him, then you allocated the ministry to yourself as a president. It's an aberration. And I think we need to put an end, an end, an end to that. You just have a minister of state who cannot take decision until the issue gets to the presidency. You know how many agencies of government are under the presidency? Oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's just sad that we will be having this in this age and time. It's like the president of America allocating to his office the office of the defense. All right. The um, president yeah, uh, Judy Johnson, it's, 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 um, it's, it's a very, very, very interesting Friday morning. And, you know, I, I believe that, you know, the concerns and the things that you've spoken about, you know, a lot of Nigerians also share similar views um, with regards to moving the country forward. Um, uh, can we also, you know, speak a little bit more on power? Um, how, you know, and I, I was sharing this earlier, you know, that I think one of the things that we don't have is shame as a country. Um, how, you know, do you, you know, explain? And do you think that maybe somebody should be fired if we have eight power plants currently dead and one of them is currently in intensive care, um, you know, maybe clinging on to life? Um, what do you, you know, think should be, or who do you think should answer for, you know, questions like that? Well, um, as a Christian, by faith, not the by God, according to the Jewish account of creation, the first thing God used to solve the problem of, war, of the world is, let there be light. We cannot resolve our economic problem without light. Until we solve the power problem, this economy cannot grow. And people are benefiting from this darkness because they are agents of darkness. And Agent of darkness, we only make money in the dark. So we have nine power plants. Eight is down. And one is at critical condition. What we need to do to solve this problem is that once there is no light, you shouldn't power the state out to the generator. You shouldn't power the presidency. Let them leave. Let them be under the national grid. So once the national grid collapses, the president in Nassau will live in darkness. The state governors in their various state houses will live in darkness. The national assembly will be in darkness. So it is an aberration for agencies of government, for arms of government to be powered by power until we take that critical and drastic decision that, you know what, we will not allocate money for generator for state house. We will not allocate money for generator for government offices. We will not allocate money for generator for public officials in their various residences. Then the issue of power. Do we need rocket science to solve power problem? Do we need rocket science to solve power problem? Do we need? We don't need rocket science to solve just to generate power. It's just like the refinery too. It takes us back to if our refineries are functioning, because these things are interrelated. They are they dependent. They are dependent on 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 one another. If our refinery is functioning. We generate liquefied natural gas. We could power this plant with liquefied natural gas other than using um, um, dam, using using hydropower, hydroelectric system to, to solve the problem. So there are things that we need to do. And until we do it, it's a step-by-step -step procedure. It's All about right. foundation. If you don't do the foundation, you can't put the roofing 
on the house. So the All power right. issue, we need a drastic situation. And they shouldn't power the state house. We should have it in our law. We shouldn't right. put money right. for generator. You know, this, this, this okay. thing you just said about power, I, I used to have a boss who said he had issues with uh, electricity and he went to uh, a disco to complain and he discovered that they were using a generator set there as well. So Yeah, that's... And like, um, like you pointed out, Earth don't rule in Nigeria. You have heads ruling. Are people disciplined? Are people sanctioned? No, heads don't rule. We just had EFCC will arrest. They will make noise about corruption cases. They will arrest and they will release the person on bail and then will go, the litigation will go on for years or well, they it's, will, it's, um... the court will pass judgment and it will get to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court will say, oh, um, because of technical issues, like we are for the ship whip of the National Assembly because of technical issues, the Supreme Court will oh. order for a retrial. How we would you guess? How would we get the the evidence after twelve years? After tw the witnesses and the rest of it. It's so a, we, are just, a, the, we are just playing it. it. It's our own local pandemic here in Nigeria. Uh, Sites COVID nineteen mm, electricity yeah. is our own pandemic. Mm. Um, quickly, also share your thoughts in a minute. Um, on the nation this morning it says here, yeah, gunmen hoist Biafran flag in Anambra town. Um, where do you think we're going with all of this? And um, how can we have better conversations about what's going on in the southeast? I pray what happened in Yugoslavia does not happen in Nigeria. Um, what happened in Yugoslavia is from Yugoslavia that you have Serbia, Montenegro, and the rest of it, they broke up. Yugoslavia has similar attributes like Nigeria. And um, I hope we don't get to that, to that, to that, to that level where you have high level of genocide killings and the rest of it because some parts want to break away from the we need to have a conversation do we still want to continue as a country or not until we have that conversation you'll be having these challenges and that and then the amount of guns in the hands of eight men in the hands of private citizens in this country um for about three years ago no 20, 2014 2015 there were a lot of cashment of arms that were seized. Yes. That were seized. They were seized. And they, when Ali became custom boss, and they will show it on, they have not prosecuted one person. We have not seen the head. I knew I did more than seven programs on TV and on radio concerning seizure of arms, illegal arms imported into the country. We are those arms. Yet, the Nigerian army does not have arms and ammunition to fight Boko Haram, but we have arms and ammunition fully distributed across across the country. A governor bought 1,000 1, AK-47. You record that issue. What has yes. happened? The governor of Okun State, the former governor of Okun State, let's call it speedy speed. The former governor of Okun State, in the armory of Okun State Cup, I don't know whether Okun State government was fighting war then. They had 1,000 AK-47. What has happened to that? I hope and I pray that we don't degenerate into what happened in Yugoslavia, or what happened in, in, right. in Somalia, or what happened in, in Sudan. I'll quickly add this. In 1983-84, when the president was a pre military president, we did a campaign to prevent brain drain, to stop the migration of Nigerians to other countries. When they say, Andrew, don't check out. Then it, you don't need a visa to travel to Britain. You don't need visa to talk to all Commonwealth countries. You can do your you can do your investigation. Nigerians were checking out, and then government came up with don't check out. Under this present administration again, with this president president, you know how many Nigerians that have checked out of this country? Willingly. Only God will save us from what is happening. And we have not even done a campaign to prepare that. Only God will save us from what is happening in this country. An average Nigerian, all you need to do is to take a survey. We deal with the younger generation. I teach. Take a survey, how many of them wants to really live in Nigeria again? Because their, their hopes and admin, their hopes and aspirations have been dashed. They see no opportunity, lack of opportunities in this country. Oh, and government must wake up. When people become desperate, then they become desperate. Chaos is inevitable. Thank you. God bless you. Mm. Thanks a, a lot for uh, well your thoughts this morning and for kicking off our Friday morning uh, with all that uh, fire. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you.
Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yes, All right. thank you. <laughs> Stay with us. Uh, the breakfast continues. We're coming back after the short break with uh, Today in History, and we're sharing with you things that happened today many years ago. I'm going back to the year 2013 to share a very, very sad incident here in Nigeria. Stay with us. <laughs> 